Take a look at the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook. We do see there's a lot going on in the northern Atlantic, at least when it comes to the hurricane season. We now have newly formed tropical depression 10, which very likely will become tropical storm Idalia in the near future and will likely become a hurricane just before it potentially makes landfall somewhere along the coast of Florida. And this could bring major impacts right around the bit on um, Big Bend area where you could experience heavy rainfall as well as strong winds. And and you're probably wondering how strong will we see tropical depression 10 get well we're going to take a look at several different factors in this video such as the amount of dry air as well as the wind shear um that'll play a role in terms of its strength by the time it approaches the coast but definitely right especially right around the big bend area you need to prepare for potentially major impacts from this storm system and we have hurricane franklin which likely will become a major hurricane as it continues ahead further northward the good news is is however that it's likely to move out to sea thanks to the strong westerly winds that are likely to build right over the northeast and we're going to see a trough dig down to allow this to be able to avoid the east coast which is certainly good news but the east coast still needs to prepare for the possibility of rip currents and we have these two other disturbances which currently have a low chance of formation but we that could potentially change especially for this one um if um if this were if um once this tropical disturbance does head a little bit further west where where conditions could become a little bit more favorable and could pose more of a threat right around the caribbean islands we're going to take a closer look at that um at this disturbance in this video as well as several different disturbances at the national hurricane center isn't listing down right now but do have a possibility of developing so here are the overall compositions of these um, tropical disturbances as of right now. Here is tropical depression 10 and we do see there's a pretty large area of convection um, uh, um, go, um, going around the center of circulation and we do, however, we do see there isn't um, there isn't a ton of a blow up of convective activity, at least um, near the center of circulation. More of that convective activity is just on the outside. So we're going to definitely need to see the um, um, more convective activity for this storm system. Before I could confidently say we're going to um, see this become a tropical storm, it, it is inevitable at this point. It will develop into a tropical storm. But right now, it definitely needs more convective activity for that to occur just a little bit right around the center circulation however it's expected that it is expected we're going to see more convective activity and then here we have hurricane franklin and we do see it struggling a little bit right now there's a decent amount of wind shear surrounding it and we do see quite a bit of dry air in training the eastern half of this storm system however conditions are expected to become more favorable once this heads for northward and potentially attain a uh, major hurricane status so definitely watch out for bermuda especially for potentially direct impacts and even indirect impacts could still bring um major um major um issues for you guys so you definitely need to at least keep tabs with this hur um with hurricane franklin and the east coast as well be aware of the possibility of a high rip current risk and then here's our other disturbance which we do see there's a decent amount of convective activity going on but there is a couple pockets of gyre air which is the reason why the national hurricane center is very confident in this developing but we're gonna need to wait and see if that continues once it heads towards the caribbean so here's what the European model is forecasting over the next several hours when it comes to the next few tropical disturbances. Here's tropical depression 10. It's expected to linger over the same area, right? Over the Yucatan Peninsula of Metzco. And this is due to the fact that the steering currents are quite weak. There is a ridge located right here, but there's another ridge located right here. And this low pressure system is pretty far um, from these two ridges or, it, um, at le or it's to a point where both of these ridges have sort of the same effect where this ridge wants to take it northward while this ridge wants to take it southward. So it's under um, it's under a very difficult um, situation when it comes to the steering flows. So it's expected to linger over the same area for I'll say the next um, 48 to 72 hours, which is only concerning, especially for the western tip of Cuba, where you could experience a, um, a prolonged period of heavy rainfall as well as flooding. But eventually, we're gonna see a trough move down from um, Canada down to the northeastern portion of the United States and create a new steering flow 
um, shift the wind, uh, the surface level wind direction from more of a southwesterly direction, and that will steer the storm most likely towards the coast of Florida. And we do see the storm is expected to strengthen. There will be a decent amount of convection surrounding it. The European model is expecting the convection to enhance. However, the reason why the European model, as well as other computer models, aren't very confident in developing or at least rapidly intensifying this storm is due to the fact that there's going to be a little bit of dry air on the western half of this storm most likely so this storm will be a little bit lopsided and of course when the storm system's lopsided it's less likely to develop a efficient enough heat engine for rapid intensification to occur so that will limit this storm um, most likely from rapidly intensifying however along the coast you still could easily experience a category one potentially up to category two status just before landfall and that's certainly enough to cause major impacts and potentially storm surge along the coast especially since it's going to have all of this time over water to pile up um a, a lot of the um, gulf of mexico and just pour it right on to the Big Bend area and of course the Big Bend area is very vulnerable to storm surge flooding because all the water um, all the water that's going to be forced by the southwesterly flow of this storm system will pretty much um, converge in one area and create just mu a much bigger storm surge threat than let's say if the coast was just pretty much straight since it's a bend where all the water will funnel towards the big bend area that's going to enhance the storm surge risk which is definitely a major concern but most likely expect category one category two at landfall right around the big bend area of florida and of course heavy rainfall will be the biggest threat and this won't only be a threat for florida we could see impacts up towards georgia south carolina north carolina and maybe even as far north as virginia the um european model isn't expecting that to occur they expect the storm to curve to the east just before it could bring a rainfall to virginia but you still want to keep tabs on this right around the mid-atlantic and in terms of other services here's hurricane franklin we do see it's going to be under a fairly convective environment once it heads further northward and the dry air will lessen and that will allow it to strengthen most likely the major hurricane status but we do see this chop will steer it out to sea which is certainly good news um but bermuda you need to pay very close attention to this for the possibility of um uh, of direct impacts which could definitely be devastating especially if this moves over you guys as a major hurricane so let me keep that in mind throughout the entirety of the island and take a look at um this other disturbance we do see there will be a decent amount of convection but the european mall expects the steering flows to weaken and allow this storm to move further northward and the dry air will just be too much for it to handle as the dry air will be pretty um will be um will definitely be like um at large right over the main development region so which is certainly good news hopefully it stays that way um in the near future so here's a wind shear forecast from the european model and when it comes to tropical um depression 10 which likely will become tropical storm e um edalia um we do see there's gonna be an upper level high located just um in, um just above the center of circulation which will allow a nice outflow to exist right over this zone for it to intensify the wind shear is quite strong just on the western side but the center of circulation is able to avoid it just enough and the strong upper level winds are creating a nice outflow channel for this to intensify despite the stronger wind shear just to the north of it because the stronger wind shear isn't necessarily associated with an outside force it's more so associated with an upper level high that's just above the center of circulation which promotes um tropical cyclone development because it allows more ventilation to occur with this storm for the outflow to increase um and when it comes to hurricane franklin we do see it's a very similar scenario while the wind shear will be just strong just outside the storm it'll mainly be due to the fact that there's going to be an upper level high right over it and that should allow the storm to have a pretty um open lane to intensify um since um the stronger upper level winds just outside the center circulation will improve the outflow of this storm and in terms of this next disturbance we do see very similar but Again, like I said, I expect the dry air to be the main um, inhibiting factor with this tropical disturbance. And 
Um, in terms of the Caribbean, there could potentially be another tropical wave. Um, let me show you guys the water vapor imagery real quick. There could be this next tropical wave that might have the chance of developing in the long term future. We have had some on some members wanting to develop this. Um, but the European model is just as expecting enough um, moist air to um, surround this low pressure system for it to have a good chance. But definitely keep tabs on this over the next several hours. The GFS model for the most part is very similar to what the European model is stating when it comes to all the tropical services. But the, Europe, the GFS model expects the storm to strengthen a lot quick, uh, more quickly as it approaches the coast of Florida where we are potentially seeing a, nearly a category 2 make landfall right around the Big Bend area. So we know the GFS model is definitely um, has a stronger bias to strengthen storms, um, storms more, more rapidly. So we need to take it with a grain of salt, but don't disregard it either. I could easily potentially see a category 2 type storm making landfall around the Big Bend area, um, especially since the outflow will um, definitely promote for more um, um, intensification as well as the fact that the sea surf temperatures right over the Gulf of Mexico are quite warm so despite the dry air the storm could still be able to intensify quite a bit just before landfall and bring impacts um, well further northward up the southeast states and we do see um, very similar forecast with um, Hurricane Franklin again um, it's a stronger solution than the European models, but mainly the same when it comes to trajectory moving out to sea. But the but it's slightly a little uh, more northward than the European model, so that would enhance the rip current risk um, right around um, southern Canada and the, the northeast. But um, either way, um, whether the GFS model's scenario is correct or the European model's scenario is correct, you should expect a high rip current risk right up along the east coast so definitely keep that in mind and in terms of these next um few other top world services here's the uh, the top world service i'm keeping close eye on um the national hurricane center hasn't listed an area where it has a possibility of developing but we do see the gfs model wants to intensify this and bring a tropical storm right up along the central american coast um the gfs model definitely expects more moist air and of course like i said it has a bias of bringing more moisture um for these tropical waves so we need to take it with a grain of salt um but it's only something to be aware of especially since both of the two most reliable on um, computer models ensemble members are um do at least um show the possibility we could see a tropical storm make landfall somewhere around central america and potentially bring an enhanced risk of rainfall right over the caribbean islands as well so here's um are the ensemble members for tropical depression 10 we do see all of them agree that it's going to make landfall along the coast of florida somewhere around the big bend area is the most likely it seems like um it really all depends on the steering um um the main steering flow of this storm um how far south this next trough moves to the northeast um and of course how strong it is because i'll determine when it takes that turn towards the east and that could mean um the impacts would shift further eastward but if we were to see this low pressure system a little weaker and um not as strong and we should expect a track a little bit further westward where the impacts would be of course focused a little bit further westward as well but majority of them take it right around the big bend area and right around hurricane status so you need to prepare accordingly at this point since it's highly likely you're going to experience impacts Here's the National Hurricane Center's forecast when it comes to um, what will likely become Tropical Storm Idalia. Um, we do see that it likely will make landfall as a hurricane somewhere along the coast of Florida and remain a tropical storm even over land over um, Georgia as well as South Carolina. So you need to prepare for the possibility of heavy rainfall, storm surge along the um, big um, bend coast as well as um, strong winds since there is a possibility we could see a category two so don't take this um lightly um throughout um the northern portion of florida here's the national hurricane center's forecast when it comes to hurricane franklin the national hurricane center expects this to become a major hurricane but avoiding the east coast which is good news but comes uncomfortably close to bermuda and i wouldn't be surprised that in the next 
National Hurricane Center update, we see the track shift a little bit further southward since the European model has shifted its forecast where it wants to bring the center circulation further southwards where potentially Bermuda experiences more direct impacts over Bermuda. Then they be aware of this and along the entirety of the East Coast, be prepared for the potential the potential of life-threatening rib currents don't take it lightly uh don't take it lightly at all if you're advised not to go in the water then it's best not to do so because you definitely don't want to underestimate rib currents unfortunately a, um a hot there's a high number of people who die every year i'm um, just off of rib currents and it's unfortunate because it could easily be avoided just don't go in the ocean um over the next few days since the rip current risk will be high all throughout the east coast so here are the ensemble members from the um from the european model and we do see so we um have several troubled services becoming tropical storms just before they impact um the central america which is only very interesting and something we are going to need to pay close attention to throughout the caribbean as well as the coast um of the central america since there is certainly that possibility with this next tropical wave moving through and of course here's what um will likely become tropical storm idalia making landfall right around the coast of florida um most likely as a hurricane and a majority of the unsolved members do take hurricane franklin out to sea which is certainly good news here's the forecast and amount of rainfall over the southeast um from um hurricane idalia and it's very concerning um you could potentially see anywhere from seven to ten inches of rain right around um, northern florida and this extends further northward into north carolina south carolina georgia where you could experience anywhere from five to eight inches of rain so flash flooding is likely and just widespread um river flooding in general is expected so definitely prepare for um, that all throughout the southeast so here's my overall forecast when it comes to the hurricane season so um when it comes to hurricane idalia it's likely it's going to bring major impacts around the big bend area prepare accordingly and for these next few trouble disturbances the chances are currently low but we do have some on some members um disagreeing with that so it's at least something to be aware of we're definitely going to need to see more moisture um, and less um, stable air surrounding these storm systems before I could confidently say there's a better chance that these tropical disturbances will develop but we're gonna need to wait and see um, because that could potentially change beyond the seven day mark but that's it for now guys and I thank you guys for watching